Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Kind Works Weekly Kind Soups. We are going to um, give you a little bit of introduction to Kind Works, and then we'll just get right on with today's cooking um, extravaganza. Um, very happy to introduce you to Salma, Kind Works Chief Inspiration Officer, who will lead us today. Hi, Hi everyone. Welcome. Welcome to a Kind Soup for the Soul. Um, for those of you who are new, there may be uh, a few of you joining who are new. We, um, KindWorks is a nonprofit organization. We've been around for 14 years now, and we make it easy for busy people to take part in community service. So we arrange a whole range of uh, different projects from setting up apartments for refugee families uh, to cooking meals for shelters. Uh, previously, we were mentoring inmates uh, in jail and when COVID hit we had to pivot like so many organizations and figure out how we could still do good uh, without actually gathering as a community which we used to do and so our uh, one of our ideas was to cook soup together via zoom in our respective kitchens make a huge pot of soup and serve our families that night and share the rest with people in need people in shelters and food banks uh, people suffering from COVID, our healthcare heroes, uh, and just our neighbors who could use a pick-me-up, which is what soup provides. So we've been doing that for over a year. We've provided thousands and thousands of quarts of soup and made people's lives, we hope, a little bit easier. And uh, today we are really honored for a very special kind soup. It's with three dear sisters, very dear friends of mine, uh, Rufi, Ruhi, and Nomi. They are the daughters of uh, an amazing um, of Aftab uncle who passed away last year. And we are going to cook soup, his favorite soup, uh, in memory of him and to do some good in his name. And I will let them introduce themselves and introduce their, their, their dad to us. Thanks, Selma. Um, Thanks everyone for joining. This is a very special kind of soup for us. So it's for our dad and it was his one year death anniversary last week or the week before. And we thought it would be really nice to do um, something in his name. And it, was his month. it was his birthday month too. It's a big month for him. So he's no longer with us, but we remember him every day. And I think you'd be very amused that we were making soup and giving it out. So um, let me introduce my sister who, this is uh, Ruki. And I have another sister, and I don't know, she should, she's in New York, so she should be online. Or if she hasn't joined yet, she can introduce herself when she joins. Okay, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, Ruhi, if you would like to just um, lead us in the soup making process, let us know. Yes. Should, should we be saying <laughs> our onions? Yeah, I coordinated <laughs> and, a lot and of just, um, our, actually our, our dad's aide, Erica, who's still with the family. She's the one who came up with this soup um, and he enjoyed it many, many days. Uh, it's pretty easy to make. I'm not the cook of the family. That would be the sister over here. So um, although I did help with the coordination of stuff, I'm going to turn it over to Api because she is the real master in the kitchen. So no, I'm not the real yeah. master. And me I... and my friend Nisha are going to assist. Nisha's... So, yeah. Yeah, so. so a couple of Ruhi's friends have joined. I think Kulsum has joined. Yeah. And I think yeah, Nisha's here. OK. So as I'm going to lead, uh, it's a very, very simple soup. And we need a big pot, I guess. Um, everyone has a big pot. And you just, I guess, there's a lot of butter in this soup. And that's really where the taste comes from. So you're using a whole stick of butter. Um, and basically, I would suggest the first thing you guys do is chop up the butter, uh, the whole stick, and let it slowly melt in the I'm pot. Sure the and then you, um, yeah. um, um, you can um, add the onions to saute them. You actually saute almost all the ingredients at the same time. So uh, the red peppers, if you can see red pe the red and orange peppers, some potatoes, but two squash here chopped up. So I don't know if you guys have already chopped it up, so I don't want to rush everyone. So if people need time to chop stuff up, let me know and then we can wait. And there's the onions that we chopped up, um, some stock of cubes, um, some herbs, and we're going to just be using water and salt and pepper. So that's all we need. So do people need time to chop things up? Yeah. Um, every, everyone feel free to uh, chime in. 
we're a smallish group. So I think usually we um, try and chop in advance, but some may be chopping at the moment. So um, I am just melting my butter at the moment and chopping onions and potatoes. Um, my squash is ready. So everyone join in wherever you are. And Rufi, tell us a little bit about your dad. He loved soup. Did he love to cook? Did he like to entertain? Um, well, he loved organizing events and making up menus. He, 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 he really cooked. I mean, sometimes he did. When he was well, he did. But um, he loved, his favorite thing was to organize a party and come up with a menu and give it to my mother to cook. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big outsourcer, of, uh, yeah, but good at party planning, um, good at finding the right recipes. So last Thanksgiving, we actually took a menu that he had made for us um, the year before that and made that. And actually it was a delicious menu from Ismail Merchant's uh, cookbook and his recipes. And um, we should have done it the year before. It was just really good. It was better than the actual Thanksgiving meal we had. So he had a real skill for figuring out what to make, um, finding the right recipes. And he prided himself in being the best Chinese cook in the family. So he likes <laughs> Asian flavors or liked Asian flavors, um, steaks as well, <laughs> and things like that. So um, yes. <laughs> And a lot of our food tastes come from um, our father as well. So, did, so did he cook the, um, like the Chinese food and the steaks? Did he cook as well as outsource and give recipes? Uh, oh yeah, he used to cook those. Say, yeah, <laughs> he once had to take care of me and Rui for a week. And remember in Sudan, and we ate eggs like twice a day, every day. He, 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 I think he he was um, he was a single parent for a while to my eldest sister. So I think he used to cook a lot of food for her, she tells us. But when me and my younger sister were left alone with him, for some reason, maybe work commitments, I don't know, he fed us a lot of eggs that week uh, to the point where we got sick of eggs. <laughs> yeah, but he was a very good sous chef. Yeah, yeah. But he had, I mean, he, um, his Chinese food was actually really good. So he did have a eye for what to put into the sauce and seasonings, but he always needed someone to like chop up stuff and prepare everything. So very much a chef, so yeah. <laughs> So guys, I'm melting the butter. Uh, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm just melting it a little bit. And then I'm so, just going to uh, put in the onions in first. And I'm just going to saute the um, onions once the butter is melted a little bit. That's on medium heat, right? Yeah. Do we need two? Um, uh, Do we need one? Or one pot? What did you say? Do we need two pots or one pot? Do you have a big pot? Use your biggest pot. Okay. You're basically, Api said she's gonna saute everything into one um, into one big pot. And then after that, it's just gonna go into the blender. So. So, uh, Nomi, Rui tells me that there's a place you can drop off the soup in New York, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my yes. There is, Deb, Deb will let you know. Um, okay, Deb, because Nomi's in New York, so she's gonna drop up the soup in New York, Deb. So there's um, on our website, on the page where you um, saw the recipe, there's a link to the free outdoor refrigerators that are scattered all around New York. So depending upon where you are, Nomi, you, you can most likely find one of these free outdoor refrigerators and, and just freeze the soup before you bring it over and make sure that you mark right what the things that we ask you to mark on the um, label on our website and it'll let people know that this is vegetarian, not vegan, because it's got the butter in it and whatever other health concerns they may have. Okay? Thank you so much, Deb. Oh, sure, absolutely. What part of New York are you in? I'm in Chelsea. This is there Jill. is, there is a, um, I think there's a Chelsea free refrigerator on somewhere very close to um, 15th and, and 6th Avenue. Perfect, we'll drop it off there tomorrow then. Great, thank you. Somebody else in New York cooks, Hannah, and she drops off there. It'll be funny if you see her soups there when you go there. And my friend Lariel is here and she's already well advanced for me, but she seems to be doing, uh, she's in Brooklyn. I'm sure. That's fantastic. Hi, there's a, there's a fridge right by me. So I'm very excited. It'll be very convenient. Oh, that's terrific. If you guys think of it, take pictures of your soups in the fridge and send them to me. That'll be fun. Will do. Thank you. So how did this program start? I didn't read the website. Sorry. 
I'm gonna let Salma give you the uh, the um, version that is. What's up? Um, Nomi's asking about how the program started. Our soup program? Yeah. Or kind words. I, soup program in particular. I know soup program. Always, so always bring soup. Right, program. She missed. I think she missed the first uh, ten minutes. Some yeah. Of so, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Don't do it again. Don't do no, it. No, no, no worries. It's just uh, you know, usually we get together as uh, as a community and volunteer. <laughs> setting up apartments and uh, cooking meals for shelters. But during COVID, we couldn't get together uh, as we usually do. So we wanted to figure out a way that we could still do good at a time where the need was so great. Uh, so I think Deb, it was your idea to cook soup um, together in our respective kitchens, connect by Zoom. We've been doing it every week for about a year and a half. And uh, we've made thousands of quarts of soup to deliver to neighbors and shelters and others. So it's just, it's been an amazing way to uh, not only do a little bit of good, but also build a sense of community at a time when we've been, you know, so apart from each other. Um, it's, it's, very, it's very nurturing and warm to see uh, each of us in our kitchens to, we end up, you know, talking about recipes and traditions, sharing stories, uh, talking about our elders, in this case, your dad, um, so it's been it's been a really wonderful way to feel connected when we have been uh, distanced socially. So yeah. But I've got the onions sauteed a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and add. You can add all the other vegetables uh, in um, as soon as the onions are sorted and softened a little bit. If anyone has any questions, just let us know. I'm sure my sister will answer. <laughs> just, how thick are you guys uh, cutting up the butternut squash? Like how, how big it is? Um, here, I can show you. How big are we cutting the butternut squash? We can just show you. The squash are sort of like one inch sizes, actually. So about an inch, um, make them small. It's gonna make it easy for you to grind, depending on what kind of blender you have. If you have a hand blender, I'd suggest cutting it smaller. But if you have, a big uh, power kind of thing. This would a bigger thing to work. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, there's four onions in here. Sorry, what was the question? Are there four onions, really? Uh, four, four small onions or two large onions. Oh, okay. We're good then. I think you should have put them in the other one here. The bigger the one, right? Yeah. Just easier to saute them. That's, yeah, uh, that's a lot too. Yeah. So who can tell us some of the most fun or interesting stories about your dad? Well, I can tell you, I mean, as, as Rohina was saying, there was a while where he was a single parent and he was a very active cook in those days because he used to live in all these very strange places. And I used to be at boarding school. And when I came home from boarding school, I used to go to boarding school in England. And he was really, I wanted home cooked food. And as a single dad, you know, he'd be sitting in Sumatra in Indonesia or Tehran in Iran, wherever he was posted. And he had figured out from my grandmother how to make like five things. <laughs> and he would, he was very good. Every time I came home from school, there would, that meal would be ready. Like that, you know, my favorite chicken and one vegetable and a rice dish would always be ready. And that was his kind of his repertoire. Um, and often when I used to come home from school, my grandmother would also be brought in. So it was, it was very rare that he was alone when I was home from school, often my grandmother would be living with us at that time. But um, so he, but he could make a few things. I mean, he not a huge amount, but he could make like five, six things and he would make them regularly um, to make me happy, which was very sweet of him. So sweet, yeah. yeah. So he was very good that way. He was a very good dad. He's, we've got like, I think there was like a borderline obsession that we had with him because he was quite entertaining. Um, always a good story, a good storyteller as well. And today on Facebook, actually, it was on my Facebook memories. There was a funny one. I guess there was a cricket match on um, during this time last year, or not last year, maybe in 2016 or 17. 
And I'm obviously narrating like as part of my status message that cricket game. And I'm trying to come up with whether I'm a jinx when I watch the cricket match or not and whatever. And then I guess he decided to pipe in and I didn't even remember this. It was just on the um, Facebook memories. He decided to pipe in, I guess, during that time and said that I think I must be a jinx too, just because he went to sleep. It was like 1230 in the morning. So he was quite, <laughs> he was quite, yeah, quite funny. Never was upset if Pakistan lost cricket, I would be much more upset because he's just like, at least you're either going to win or lose. So he had no um, issue with that. And another funny story is he did get to go to the World Cup um, semi final in 1970. What was it? Cricket oh, does everyone know what cricket is? Sorry. <laughs> it's a sport <laughs> that the rest of the world is obsessed with, like baseball and the rest of the world. Um, and so he went to a match and I guess Pakistan, which is where we're originally from, was playing against um, West Indies and Pakistan was the one favored to win. Um, my dad bet against the Pakistan team, even being from Pakistan, who <laughs> bet for West Indies, which I thought was very disloyal when he was telling me the story. But he said that, no, actually, I was going to either I was going to win either way, like either our team lost and I won a bunch of money or, you know, <laughs> I, or my practical. team wins. Yeah. yeah, it's very practical, man, <laughs> exactly. Guys, so I don't know if you're in the situation. I found my pot is too small, so I'm now going to make a break. You guys may be much more experienced yeah, in this, so I'm going to make so it, have, we're in the same separate up in two pots. We are, but you know what? You guys cook with us every Monday, and we'll make sure that you learn all the tricks of the trade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jenna. Great job. Do that. We've all been through I don't know if she used to. They used a yeah. They used a big saucepan actually. Yeah. 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 One, this one, I can make it in this one. Yeah, it's okay. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna You know, cooking soup in um, memory of your dad is is particularly special for me. Um, he, the last few years, uh, I I used to make a lot of soup, and Rufi would come over, and there'd always be a, a big pot of soup in my kitchen. And uh, your dad loved my soup. I'm. It's it's one of the things I feel so happy about that uh, he got to try a lot of different soups, and he, yeah, he loved your soups. And there's that lovely that, video. We need yes. to find. Video. Yeah, there's a great video yeah. where you talk about I know. Yes, no, I have it. Thank you for your soup. Thank you for your soup. Yes, I have it saved in my videos where his okay. thank you for my he soup. He actually too. asked to make the video. Like, I used uh, to record him all the time obsessively. And so he used to not like it. But when we got the soup, he was like, he was like, I want to say, say thank you to her. So let me send a video. So that was his that idea. Was so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> there are many times when Abu was in the hospital where would go and make Thelma Baji outside and she would have soup and couldn't yeah. find the parking, but always would bring soup and Abu would be so happy because he didn't have to eat the terrible uh, hospital food and got to eat this Michelin type of soup instead. <laughs> so nice. I'm at the stage where I've got putting in salt and pepper. I put in the rest of the vegetables and I'm just sauteing them. And I've added my spices, salt, pepper, and the Italian seasoning. How much have you let the squash cook down before you put the other vegetables in? Um, I would saute them for about like 10 minutes maybe. And then, um, oh, what did you, sorry, that was not your question. What was your question? Uh, I guess two questions. One, what sequence did you put? So onions, then peppers, then squash? I there's no sequence. The only sequence was to saute the onions first. You can dump everything else together. Okay. And then just saute it for like 10 minutes and then we can add the um, liquid, I guess. Yeah. 
I mean, what heat level should this be on? What? What heat level should this be on? I would say medium. Keep it like at a, I don't know what yours is, but like a six or seven. Okay, like a medium high. Yeah. I had it on high, so. So everyone um, on the call who may be new to KindWorks, we, um, we're doing a, a special uh, Kind Soup next week as well. So every Monday, 5.30 to 6.30 at the same recurring Zoom link, you'll find us. So whenever you're in the mood and want to do some good and, you know, cook together, uh, join us. And next Monday, we are cooking a Ukrainian uh, soup. Uh, just any recognition of what is happening in the world uh, we wanted to do something we couldn't figure out you know how we could be of use um and not not that our ukrainian soup is going to reach uh those in ukraine but it will hopefully ease the burden of people here who are in need and in the process you know just help us as well doing service doing good um being of help to someone is so good to help us as well to de-stress and to just get us through difficult times and i know so many of us have been feeling that way the last couple of years and the last couple of weeks in particular uh, so we thought let's um put this special recipe for a green borscht soup which is a typical ukrainian soup we'll share it with shelters and food banks uh, we'll learn a little bit about ukrainian cooking and recipes and spices and traditions and just sort of help us um, get through this difficult time together. So join us. It's a really lovely idea. It's 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 awesome. So and another thing I'll say about um sharing our soups, um, you know, we do list places where you can deliver kind of quantities of quarts of soups, but feel free like Salma did with your dad, everybody feel free to give soups wherever you'd like. If you happen to have a friend with um, family or relatives or perhaps ancestors came from Ukraine, anybody who's really suffering with this um, with personally with what's going on over there, please feel free. I mean, what would delight someone more than to know that you made a Ukrainian soup, you know, and, and brought it to them at a time when they're so upset about what's happening over there. So, you know, we, we do keep track of where everybody shares soups on our website. So we ask you to just link and answer four questions. It's right on our soup page just to tell us how you shared it, but it's a perfectly great way to share soup, to give it to your upstairs neighbor and to give it to you know, the mailman or whatever you want to do with it. We are, you know, using this as a way to be kind, not just to um, fill up the food, the soup um, kitchens and food banks. Um, last week also, we had a, a very special kind soup. Each, each, each week it's special. Um, but last week it was our dear friend, Carol, who's been a kind worker for many, many years. And she was um, uh, recognizing her mom who passed away a year ago uh, and invited family and friends from all over the country to join the soup session. And we made a split pea soup. And, you know, I, I never knew Carol's mom, but now I feel I do. And I think that feeling is so important too. You know, I, I pray for her at night now and I feel like I, you know, know her through this one hour session together of hearing stories um, of, you know, just cooking and learning about her uh, interest in entertaining and how she would just make um, uh, souffle out of, you know, something that didn't quite turn out. I can't remember exactly what Carol said, but, you know, if a, if a tart didn't turn out exactly as it was supposed to, she would just rename it and call it something else. And it was meant to be exactly as it turned out. So that was her spirit and her uh, sense for life. And it's such a beautiful wisdom um, to have learned from, from someone during this session. So I wanted to ask you, um, Ruhi Bufi and Nomi, what 
wisdoms did you uh, learn from your dad? Is there something in particular that he would share, tell you or something that you've learned just by how he lived his own life? I know, Rufi, you shared a beautiful one, which is in, in my book. And I wonder if you'd share that with everybody. It's, it's something we can all learn from. And, and Ruhi and Nomi, if you like, would like to share, that would be great too. Yeah, I'm trying to remember which one. I think it's the one about me yeah. going to grad school. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I remember when I went to grad school, I, um, within two weeks, I decided I, I couldn't do the program. <laughs> I decided I was going to fail. Um, so I remember calling him very anxiously from, from England and saying, I think I really want to come home because I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> I'm going to make this program. And uh, he was very sweet. And he was like, well, he said, you know, he said, he said, I'm sure, I'm sure you're not going to fail. But he said, that, well, what's the worst? Even if you fail, it's no big deal. At least you can say you failed from a good university. And many people have done that. It'll be OK. You'll be fine. So don't worry about it. Just get on with it and do what you can do. Don't opt out and just figure out how you can get through it. And who knows, you may get through it. And so that was really his thing. Was uh, Although I think he didn't really believe it. And I think I say that in the book because he would have been <laughs> horrified if I'd failed. You know, you would have like yeah, to I think me, I think. Program, but I think he just did it to me to keep me in the program to keep me going because he was kind of concerned that I would just exit and leave and that was not an option I had to at least try and finish so yeah but the other girl Rui and Nomi may have other stories yeah um my I think the thing I learned from Abu was not to hold a grudge and not to get um not to take like to have a I guess a bit of a, like, give people benefit of the doubt. Abu was the kind of person that if somebody said something that, like, it would, you know, would hit at, like, what naturally would hit at my inner core, make me feel insecure or upset, Abu would just look them through it. And he would, you know, it's like if his brother were arguing with him, he would still call his brother and just chat to him about the day in a way that I'm sure was very annoying for his brother. But I think that that was the kind of guy who was. He didn't probably is like why my, uh, why he was able to live with four women for so long, or he, he said five, because he counted his mother sees away as like a still a matriarch. So yeah, he just always, uh, he was able to kind of laugh through stuff and, mm -hmm. and not get that, and not get, not get, let himself be embroiled in an argument. So nice. I guess. <laughs> For, for me, I think it's similar, um, just a, it's more of a personality trait that we've really been sort of influenced and inspired by. And one of the things is I think that he genuinely was just so happy of, for the happiness of other people around him. So I never saw um, this whole idea like this, especially now living in this sort of like social world, comparing yourself to others and things like that. He never was bothered by comparisons. He was just genuinely happy for everyone's happiness and success and really wanted it. And then I recently also shared a story with a bunch of girls. I got to talk to a school in India last week for Women's Day. And one of the girls asked me a question. I'm forgetting what the question was exactly specifically, but I did, my father came to mind because it was about, I think these girls feel a lot of pressure to get married at a young age. And especially in these remote areas in India. Um, and one of the first people to be, um, you know, one of the first girls to be going to school from their, from their communities, their respective communities. So I told, I sort of related back that there used to be a lot of pressure on me as well to get married younger, uh, mostly because of my mother who's sitting around here. And, um, and that was something that, you know, she persisted with, but as, and my dad would go along with it being the good husband that he was, but in his older age, he was very quick behind her back if she left the room to tell me, you know, like, I'm going to be less worried about the kind of guy you marry, but I'm going to be more certain that you're okay if you're focused on your studies and your work. So he really sort of had this uh, ability coming from a generation which sort of, you know, was between conservative and, and sort of seeing a, a, a more open world where you have, you know, where you must educate your girls. He really um, tried to pacify my mom, but was a huge enthusiast of sort of female education and, and sort of seeing it as a real, as being the true wealth that you leave behind to your children is the education success that they have, so. That's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing those stories. And just another, uh, my friend Nisha is here in the kitchen with us today. We're both not good cooks, so Abby's doing a lot of the driving. But Nisha was, uh, who my dad referred to as our, as his own personal private doctor. So he was quite happy 
to have someone who was just like seven, eight minutes away that could just come by. And he, he loved the bragging rights. So thanks, Nisha, <laughs> for joining. So, yeah. Um, once it boils, I guess, I, I think we put 20 cups of soup. I, I, I guess it really depends on how big your pots are, but um, so once it boils, let it simmer for 15 minutes and then, then we're good, I guess, uh, until it cools down to blitz it. I don't know where everyone else is. Where is everyone else? What are they doing? You no, know, um, Anu and Shu, I think are on the call too and, and they made the soup earlier today. So, um, I don't know if Anu or Anshu, if you guys can hear me, but did you guys put the 20, 20 cups? Is it straight directly into the pots or what? Hey, hi. We made it earlier today, yeah. And uh, what we did was we we made, put in 15 cups of stock. And when we, with everything else, that came to five, five quarts. So a little more than that. So we didn't put 20 cups, we put 15. Did you, did you not, um, when you guys made the broth, did you use cubes or pre, did you like pre? No, we used all broth. So we used, uh, we used chicken stock. You used chicken stock. Okay. Um, I didn't know that you have to boil the cubes in water. So you messy. I put you I put you <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we can do that. Let's put some stock in. Conversions. Mm -hmm. Well, they said 15 of chicken stock. You sure? Which good did you try the soup today? You ate the soup earlier today, right? Uh, yesterday what? for dinner. Okay, was it good? Yeah, you think it's good enough to share with other people? The answer is always yes. <laughs> okay, cool. he, he, he liked it. He had a whole bowl, which is not usually the case when he has soup. So Awesome. Well, both, both the parents are very good cooks, so he has quite the elevated palate. So it's good. <laughs> Ruhi, if any of your family members who are on the call want to share stories, please um, feel free to unmute and share stories of uh, Bob Uncle, if Puchku yeah. wants to say something. <laughs> sure, I don't, Puchku's met my dad, but I don't know if he remembers him. Um, yeah, but Angshu, um, like Anu and Angshu are both uh, good friends, and um, Angshu was a huge favorite of my father. <laughs> I think Angshu's father and my father would have been best friends. It's really unfortunate they both didn't get to meet, but hopefully they're both in a place where they can hang out and discuss their lovers of food and, and lovers of nice hats and nice suits. So I'll let Angshu speak if he wants to. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I'd love to. I, I don't know if I was a favorite of his, but he was certainly a favorite of mine. He reminded me of so, so much of my dad. You bashi. Abhi, come on, don't enter. You Sorry, my five-year-old is going to constantly <laughs> talk. Yeah. You you I'll, I'll call you I'll afterwards. Bashi. Yeah, we'll can, hang can out. I, can I tell a story and then you can, you can talk about that? You must see, you must see. Maybe I'll you must circle see. back to it in a bit. Angshu is like the person who would come over and help with a lot of the stuff, which I think I could have done very well and I did often, but because Angshu is a guy, he got better props for it <laughs> yeah she walked a fine line between feminism and not <laughs> different moments so, i think that yeah. is such a common trait among dads of a certain yes. age i have three brothers and it doesn't matter how much i do my brothers are always given the credit and my parents are always <laughs> looking at me to do more i'm like ah, why it's true it's true <laughs> That's <laughs> our, right <laughs> No, but Angshu is actually very handy, so I think he's done a couple of things, and um, yeah, like the the light fixtures that you helped us with, and all sorts of things. So, so yeah, I put you go. 
I would like plans? to give the alternate viewpoint. I'm one of three three daughters, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I really appreciate my parents for, especially my father, was his like he never treated us like we were girly girls. So none of us are girly girls. We're just normal people who can basically do whatever it is that has to be done. So I, I thought that that was, I thought that that was a great thing. And I didn't realize there was such a gender thing probably until I was in, I guess say junior high school. I didn't realize that you were supposed to be this or supposed to be that. And this is coming from someone who was not at all athletic. <laughs> it wasn't like he was pushing us to play soccer. We didn't play soccer back then, but to run or to, you know, wasn't that. It just, we could do anything. And if we were, he was going to go to a baseball game, why don't we come to the baseball game? Okay, fine. And I just thought that was a great <sighs> thing to instill in kids, especially girls. Yes, for sure. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's more and more common. I had a conversation with someone yesterday about how, um, uh, you know, little girls like girl things and little boys like boys. <laughs> I was just like, I think it's just what you're exposed to. So, you know, it's, uh, I grew up with cousins that watched uh, dude kind of cartoons. And so that's still stuck. It's just what you're exposed to. So it's, it's, it's great to have that kind of thinking coming from your father. Oh, and I'm, I'm thinking about what Deb said with the brothers. I mean, he probably encouraged, your father probably encouraged them to hang out and watch football games. Well, I didn't have any brothers. So we sat and we had to watch football games. I didn't think that, that was a punishment. It was kind of fun. You hung out with your dad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kelly, do you want to say something? You look like you might be ready to say something. <laughs> You're muted. Oh, sorry. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. I love that we are celebrating a dad tonight because you all weren't on this Zoom last week, but last Monday we celebrated, as Deb said, we celebrated a mother, someone's mother, and none of us knew the mother, I don't think, but we all knew the mother by the end of the Zoom. And I had never really done anything like that. And then later in the week, at the end of that week, I went to a funeral and it was actually someone that I knew but I didn't know, I didn't realize how much I didn't know about her until, you know, when you go to funerals and they give the eulogy at the end, they do the, you do the service. And then at the end, someone speaks and gives, and that's when you really get to know. And I always think at the end of all those funerals, wow, I never knew that about that person. I never knew that person really. Like I didn't know any of this person was so complex and interesting and diverse and so the Zoom last week gave us that while this person, even though this person has passed as well, it was this other opportunity in a different setting to know someone. Mm -hmm. And even though we don't have a real, any, I mean, I personally don't have any connection to the family or to, the, to, to the, uh, the host of it, I loved it. It happened to be on the day that my mother had passed away. So, so that was oh. that was just random. Yeah. Uh, and today actually happens to be the day that my mother was buried. Today was my mother's funeral. Oh, okay. So we're having another another week and another celebration of life for your father this time. But I love that we are now celebrating a father because yeah. we you know we, we don't have a lot of men on the Zoom, and yeah. we are we talk a lot about girls and women and equality and you know all the things that we care about and want our daughters to to care about and and society to care about but it's great that we uh we're just like hearing about your dad yeah, so, oh, thank you thank you for sharing that with us yeah thank you soup, for sharing. i was really interested in, in the soup because i've never made butternut squash soup that had red pepper in it before so, so I'm she's sure. from his carol is from el salvador so i think this is a soup that she oh, made from okay. el salvador that makes sense. So this is a I guess an el salvadorian version okay. of the soup yeah mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's, it's intended to be creamy at the end, right? Yeah, it's very rich. Result, I think the butter soup. flavor is the dominant right. yeah. flavor in the soup. So if you like butter, this is definitely the soup. Okay. okay. So it's got a lot she of typically, yeah, She typically made it with less butter, like about half a stick, I think, um, when she was making it at home. But we just thought, why, why cheap out on flavor? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> it could be so good. Like, yeah. sure. Use a whole so, stick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. Um, thank you. You guys yeah. really thank you. Can you please hold the uh, laptop over here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, sure. Um, so the soup is, I've got it simmering right now. So I've added the stock and everything. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Abby, so you just bring it to a boil at all? You just let I it brought it to a boil and put it to a simmer. So okay. now it's on simmer. It came to a boil. Once it came to a boil, so the second part. that's the second part. So that's it. And I guess for it's, we're like that for about 15 minutes and then we can definitely stop it once it cools. Okay. Um, maybe that picture was there, were there 20 cups of water really? Because I, I think put about 16. I think, okay. I think, I think yeah. my friend mentioned 15 cups yeah. is what they got to. Right, yeah. I'm at 15 right now. I just didn't know if I really needed to add. I'm gonna hold off for a bit. Thank you. Maybe we can take a minute, Deb, to just uh, talk about where people should take their soups. So um, we've listed on our website um, some locations that we have, um, that we've got arrangements to share soups from. So um, the only one that I'd like to change from what you all see on the website, people in DC, have a listen. The um, the freezer outside of 5171 Manning Place is full. So please choose a different drop-off location. And there are others. There are different days and times when they're all available. Um, and Or you can wait until if you're a friend of Salma's and want to check in with her. Hopefully that freezer will um, have the soup and breads that are in it delivered to the recipients that, that are expecting it at some point later in the week. And then you can use it then. But um, just go to our our website. I'm going to put on our website right now the page for this soup, and that'll give you the drop-off locations. It'll give you what you should have on your label, and it'll also give you um, the link that I'd love you to use to just report in how many soups you shared and how you shared them. Oh, that'll be in the chat. Thanks, Deb. And I just want to share, you know, this um, this location that Deb mentioned. It's outside my front door, uh, and right next to my front door is my office, uh, and my desk is in a nook with a window uh, and so one of the things that has gotten me through COVID and the pandemic and this challenging time has been uh, you know I'm usually at my desk and I see people coming up the stairs with bags full of soup and putting soup in that freezer several times a day sometimes you know several times a week and it's been just Every time I see that, it just you know makes me feel so good that there is so much good in the world out there, you know. And just to get that hit of it every so often is is really important. Um, so thank you to to all of those who've been bringing soup to to that freezer. And just this weekend, there's a, a young girl. I think she's about eight or nine. She's a Girl Scouter, and uh, the daughter of of a friend, and she wanted to donate. Girl Scout cookies uh, that people had, you know, bought to donate to people in need. And so uh, she brought them over this weekend and there are about 50 plus boxes of Girl Scouts goodies, cookies sitting on top of the freezer. The freezer is absolutely jam packed full of soup and bread. So a sixth grade class uh, in the neighborhood wanted to do good. Um, and their teacher said, you know, we've got this Kind Works has this program about soup and what goes so well with soup is uh, bread, mom. Um, and so the sixth grade class has been baking bread, um, each one, you know, themselves and bringing bread to go with the soup. So in addition to soup in that freezer, there are loaves and loaves of uh, home baked bread. So, you know, there's, each of us can do something um, and it's just really heartwarming, I think for us at Kindworks to just, give that opportunity and give that inspiration that, you know, we may not be able to change the world and that's okay, but we change one life, we change one family's life. Uh, you know, we, we make somebody smile and all that is good and it all adds up um, and it makes a difference. Okay, because Salma spoke about her freezer, I'll talk about my freezer. My freezer is not sitting outside my house, but if you don't have room in your freezer to keep, to get your soup frozen, it has to be delivered frozen, then please get it to me sometime during the week and I will put it in my freezer and it will be delivered next week to the Up County Hub, um, which is in Germantown. Okay, I've got the information in there. If you need something more, Deb knows where to find me.
Marjorie, my sister wants to know where your where your freezer is. <laughs> In my basement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is why, which is why you've got to, <laughs> if you can get it to me, what happens is um, the trunk of my car will be open tomorrow morning, probably from about, I don't know, 830 to 930 and people come and put soup in the trunk if it's frozen. If it's not frozen, mm -hmm. I'll put it in my freezer and I'll deliver it next week. Unless you can get it to me tonight, in which case I'll freeze it tonight. Okay. And, so, and which, which location is yours? I'm, it's not, it's on the chat. I live in okay. Bethesda. I live in Carter Rock near the near River and Seven Locks. Okay, between perfect. River and MacArthur off of Seven Locks. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, one of the locations, drop off locations was Reston. And that said, we could drop it off anytime. So if, can I do it late this evening? We think so. We've been told that there's a table there and you can put your soups there and they'll right. be taken care of. Um, I hope so. I've never been told otherwise, but I can't, I'm not there, so I can't mm -hmm. promise. Yeah, I was just a little yeah. apprehensive about that because it just said you can drop it off anytime, but they did say that call us to make sure we know it's out there. Ah, okay. Hello. So I've never heard otherwise. And the, the person who made that connection is not on the call right now. So we can't ask, unfortunately. No problem, thanks. I don't know if you guys are able to freeze. I don't know how many uh, containers you have, but if you're able to freeze it, then it sounds like I can pick it up later too. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay, thanks. Uh, Kelly, I just want to say like, also the other thing is that is really resonates with what you mentioned is that, um, you know, like a lot of times I think we know our parents as just our parents. And one of the, I mean, there's such few, <laughs> one of the things that sort of gives me comfort is that there's still so many stories out there for the three of us to come across and find and that hopefully like we find them at the right time when we need them and so i think that's something you know pretty amazing that there's so many this version of this person that you know and love is loved in you know as, as a different version by so many others and those stories are still out there so in that way you know there's still so much more to get to know and that's kind of a beautiful thing i think so uh, oh, how, I, I missed the beginning part. Well, how long ago did you lose your father? Has it been one year? One Just year. Just one year. Uh, yeah. On oh. February 28th. And then his birthday is on 5th of March. So actually, I oh. think it's like, you know, it's, it's this mm -hmm. reminder of like, we lost him. But then this reminder that, you know, he, he was here and we get to celebrate his, his birthday and him being here pretty soon after we kind of take the heartbreak of, of you know, having lost him. So. A good this helps you because I, even though like, again, back to last week, even though it was a different, per, a, another person's mother and someone I don't even know or her mother, I yeah. thought about it all week. Yeah. Throughout the week, I thought about it. And I thought about like the celebration of life and how that sort of, it sort of resonated with me and it yes. gave me peace. Yeah. You no, know, it made me have like, it made me feel happy and gave me peace. And so I feel like this is sort of cathartic for you all as you, you know, get to that anniversary date, especially one year, of course, and yes. you always have, and uh, like, I hope that you always have something, um, even if this is not what you do next year or whatever, it's like kind of nice every year to have something like that. Yeah. And especially since your father liked to cook and he liked food and that was a big part of your family. Um, yeah. and, and is your mother still with us? She is, is yes. <laughs> she's part of it around here. Good, that's good. Is, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to make so Chinese hard. food in honor of your dad next year. Oh, yes, you guys do it. I would beans. say he was better at ordering it than making yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing he's a big was a big um uh he, he loved going to different grocery stores, comparing like doing his purchasing price parity study himself to figure out where the best deals were. Um, yeah, yeah. What you're yeah. something more seriously though. <laughs> Professionally, he was a person who worked in agriculture. I mean, he's, he was a hydraulics um, engineer and specialized in working and developing countries on dams and, and linked to that agricultural production. So not just looking at electricity, which we think about on hydraulics, but really looking about the food aspect. And that was most of his career. So it's kind of natural he was still interested in food in every way or form because that's what he did um, for many, many years of his life. So yeah. When, when we were growing up, we were growing up in, um, in Indonesia and in Sudan when Api was at school and college in the States and in, in England. And so Abu would write these letters uh, to her every week in airmail, those like blue paper letters. And so one of the things that gave me, I think, comfort into your point, um, Kelly, about 
kind of learning about somebody after their passing is to read kind of from his own words, his description of this life. And he spoke to Appy as if she were like a peer of his. So it's kind of an odd, <laughs> like, it's kind of like, odd. like the, not the kind of things you would generally tell like, a, you know, your daughter in boarding school or your daughter in, um, in, uh, at university, but he would, uh, he would write a lot about his life and his career decisions. And um, after he passed, I spoke to like one of his old, one of Nick Hope, remember Appy, one of his old colleagues at the bank and others. And it's just always interesting to see how, uh, you know, you can spend a whole life, even when someone's gone, learning about them. Yeah. yeah. I think those, those letters were real fine. Like my older sisters kept them, which were so lucky and I had not seen them or come across them or anything. Mm-hmm. And, um, we yeah, <laughs> if it had been with one of us, I think it would have been lost by now. So really, because really, she likes to make scrap. Yeah, we're really lucky that they sit in a there. box somewhere. <laughs> and actually it was during my birthday, my, on my birthday is when I, I think my younger sister and older sister come across them, but I didn't know about these letters. And so actually on my birthday, um, is when I saw these letters and I got to basically see this other side of my dad, which was him parenting us when my younger sister was like, you know, less than a year and I was three years old and sort of his concerns about, like, you know, like our, like what we're up to and how the schooling is and how you're sort of like relocating a life and, you know, different conversations. And so it's just really interesting to be able to see like, uh, you know, this father who like who I see as an established father figure sort of like, you know, in the early stages of my life with things I wouldn't have thought he even concerned himself with or thought about um, when it came to like our day-to-day, like, you know, things that we're doing when we're like Puchku's age and stuff. So, so that's been, that, that was really nice. Yeah, it's a real treasure, so. Well, I'm sure- well, you all also have lost an email, everyone. No one writes letters anymore. <laughs> so I would say, let's write letters. That said, we did find a that's lot of great. good emails. Yeah, so. I did write a letter good to my godson now. Yeah. <laughs> No, and um, not to take the um, focus away from your dad, but I'm sure your dad was very, very proud of all three of you. Can I, can we all learn about what you all do that has, um, I'm sure, given him, gave him so much joy? Sure. My well, older sister, this is a good Aussie. Set. Because because Aggie is good because agriculture is, is yeah so <laughs> i'm about to start a new job i'm moving to rome everyone wow uh, to join the um the un uh, sort of food structure so the un has a whole bunch of food organizations which are based in rome so uh the uh, fao and the, the world Tri- uh, food organization and something called ifad which is the international fund for agricultural development so i'm moving there to do work there so i'm going to be working in the Asia Pacific and working in a whole bunch of countries in the Asia Pacific. So that's what I do. So I'm an economist and that's what I do. And then Ruhi can tell what she does. And and so Ruthie, you'll be starting your, you'll be starting the kind works chapter in Rome, I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say let's do a soup. I'll find an Italian soup and we can do a soup one evening. It'll be 10 or 11 o'clock my time, but we can do it. We would um, love that. Yeah. And maybe we can leaving? look up to the World Food Program scene. That would be oh, yeah. really interesting, that wouldn't would be it? That would great. When are you moving? Deborah, I'm moving at the end of April. So ah. I have six weeks to pack up and get out of here. Great. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Have yeah, fun. thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, my dad thought I worked in like, he thought, yeah, I tried to explain what I did to my dad once and he ended up thinking I made Roombas for a living, which is not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do IT strategy. Um, did want to do, did want to put more good into the world like both my sisters are doing, but uh, ultimately ended up working for a, uh, you know, when, when the call center stuff was really big, I worked with the uh, Bakasani based call center for a while and I realized that you can get a lot of good done by helping come, you know, do through private sector sort of mobilize their resources very quickly to respond to an earthquake that we had there and stuff. But since then, I haven't actually, I just helped my company get richer and save money. And that's pretty much me. So. Well, I, I, you know, I actually think that there's probably more you're not telling us because somebody <laughs> had to like, call with the world for internet. Yeah, I, I have a friend here stuff. who's helping me go through some of my qualifications once. And she, I think, kind of realized how evil some aspects of my job are. But there is a lot of right sizing is a great word that we use and, and, and all that. So, um, yeah, but I work for a company called NTT. Um, and, and sort of I work for their global IT strategy for consulting, yep. And then NAMI, 
Oh, sorry. One second. What, what was the connection? Was it this what you just mentioned that had you on the call with the girls from India last yeah, week? Yeah, actually, NTT does a lot of good work. They do a lot of they have a huge corporate social responsibility chapter. And so um, I was talking to the girls in India through that program that they have set up there. Right. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, oh, oh, sorry, you didn't. Um, I was just thinking Rui's like Chandler Bing from Friends, like no one knows what she does. <laughs> it's actually very true. It's a, it's a comment that comes up often. So it's just, I'm a transponder. <laughs> I have a couple of audio notes on my phone where Rui's trying to explain to me what she does. Um, I am, uh, I started my career in um, kind of development consulting or like a private sector consulting. So like Abu and Abu would say, I, my first job was like in Libya working on the reform program there uh, when they were denuclearizing. And our dad would always say like, why are you there? And he had been to Libya in the 1950s or 60s, I guess. So he had all these stories. He could out travel me anywhere. Um, and now I'm a, I'm a filmmaker and journalist. I work at the Times. I do a twice weekly podcast called Sway. Um, and I write a bit about culture and, and make video arguments in the op-ed section. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much. This was amazing. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for doing this. It was such a uh, beautiful way to remember your dad and honor your dad and, and to be with, with you and with, with new friends. Um, we just have a couple more minutes on the call. So if there are yeah. any last minute instructions in terms of um, when we should uh, blend That's our it. soup or anything else that we need to add, no, I don't think so. I think you let the soup, if you let it boil or, or simmer for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes, you let it cool and then zap it and just taste it for seasoning. And if it's good, that's great. And if not, just add a bit more salt and pepper and do what else you need to do. I hope it's good. <laughs> it's good. It smells good. Okay. <laughs> Abby, okay. what if we put too much water or broth? How do we know uh, if it's too, too liquid? I'm sure you didn't put too much broth. I'm sure you're good. You can, I'm sure it'll be fine. Is there any thickening thing? Once you guys no, put no. it in the blender, it gets better, I think. Yeah, once you're in the blender, it just sort of smooths out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you have to cool it down. No, we'll just add a bunch of flour. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corn starch, I've heard, <laughs> does the trick. Yeah. No, one has, no one has given the mantra today. The important <laughs> mantra, soup is forgiving. Just keep saying, ah. soup is forgiving. I Whatever love it that. Gotta be fun. <laughs> no one can mess it up. Yeah. Let's see. Awesome. Yeah. I think right. so. We'll let it. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to thank uh, Ruhi for organizing this because she was the one who really pushed it and pushed a whole bunch of things we ended up yeah, doing. Yeah, she was. She's the real do-gooder in the family. Uh, <laughs> and so we did a couple yeah. of things. So it was great fun. And it was really nice to be with you guys together yeah. and talk about our dad yeah. and uh, yeah. enjoyed that. But most, I want to thank Salma Vajra yeah. because she really has like, I've seen the awesome work that she does and brings together and just like her real passion for it. And she was my go-to person to think of, I want to do something for my 40th birthday. So I reached out to her, which I never got around to, but she always has a list of ideas and a list of, you know, guidance on what to do. And I, I love being able to tap into that and it's super inspirational. So thanks, Alma yeah. Baji. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. Bye. Bye, Puchku. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Thank nice. you so much. Thanks nice. for doing Thanks, Lafez. Lafez.